Hello, and welcome to another CMMI Tech Talk. Today, we are going to talk about how and why the performance report is an important part of the CMMI appraisal method. It provides valuable information to the organization being appraised. By aggregating the data across all the benchmark and sustainment appraisals that are run each year, a performance report provides insights into how the CMMI model is being used worldwide across multiple industries and demonstrates to organizations the benefits they are receiving. The pictures we obtain are dependent on the performance report being an accurate representation of the organization's measurement efforts and achievements. Appraisal teams are required by the CMMI Appraisal Method Definition Document, also known as MDD, to validate the performance report and ensure the before and after performance measurement results are consistent with the overall appraisal results. So, what does it mean to have consistency between the appraisal results and the performance report? In general, an organization that is achieving its business objectives has set a required level of performance and related measurements for itself. Of course, this level of performance may not be satisfactory to compete effectively in the market. In that case, we would expect organizations to attempt to change the level of performance by instituting a performance improvement program. This is often where the CMMI model can be used to help organizations diagnose the causes of the current level of capability and performance and help shape appropriate improvement solutions. CMMI is a tiered model and analysis shows different levels of maturity are associated with different levels of performance. When conducting an appraisal, ensure the appraisal findings reflect what is seen in the performance report. If the appraisal findings do not align with the performance report, something has likely been missed in the findings or the performance report contains inaccurate data. How can consistency be checked? Let's start by asking whether an organization is achieving its business objectives. If an organization has gone through an improvement program and new ways of working are persistent and habitual, we would expect that at least some of the business objectives have been achieved and that measurements made over time can prove it. If none of the business objectives have been achieved, or all indicate not yet achieved, the status of the organization is inconclusive. The performance improvements may have not worked, or not enough time has passed to allow the improvements to become persistent and habitual. This information should be reflected in the appraisal results. While all the practice areas are important to performance improvement, the three practice areas that are most directly related to the performance report are managing performance and measurement, governance, and implementation infrastructure. Indications from the sustaining habit and persistence practice areas may reveal that not all the processes are persistent and habitual. Weaknesses in some of the practice areas may be contributing to processes that are dependent on an organization's success. In short, if an organization is not achieving its business objectives as demonstrated in the related performance measurements, there are likely to be corresponding weaknesses in the appraisal. A related circumstance is when the organization's business objectives and the related measures are defined at too high of a level. This may make it appear as though the organization is always achieving its goals. This is often reflected when items related to objectives and measures are checked off without any clear action or results. This may also mask underlying inefficiencies or ineffective behaviors. This is usually realized when there are weaknesses at a lower level, which generally indicates the existing measurements are not good enough and are not providing management with adequate insight into what is going on. What if an organization shows it is achieving its business objectives, but the appraisal results show a significant weakness in critical steps that contribute to the overall performance of the related processes? In this instance, the appraisal team must review evidence for the related weakness or weaknesses and capture each contributing factor against the targeted performance. For example, weaknesses pertaining to measurement processes may relate to poorly defined measures, poor data quality, not following the proper processes, and or flawed analysis. 
Issues related to performance objectives may be poorly defined or defined at too high a level to be actionable. Another inconsistency may relate to a mismatch between the organization's objectives and the measures defined to assess achievement. If the collected measure is not relevant to the stated objective, significant issues may reside in the managing performance and measurement practice area or the governance practice area or both. Measurements should be traceable to and aligned with related measurement and performance and business objectives. Another inconsistency that can be uncovered by the performance report is a mismatch between the business objectives and the improvement priorities. The performance report specifically asks what improvement actions were undertaken. These actions should be verified to show that they contribute to the measured and targeted performance. If the improvement actions appear unrelated to the measured objectives, then something has likely gone wrong. Not all these circumstances indicate that an organization will fail to achieve its targeted appraisal results. However, depending on the objective evidence, that may be the outcome. The findings of an appraisal should be reflected in the performance report and in the practice characterizations, ratings, and final findings of the appraisal results. How can the appraisal team validate the performance report? The simple answer is that it happens in multiple places throughout the appraisal. It is a continuous approach and should not be only a single event in the appraisal schedule. The process of validating the performance report starts with the review of the objective evidence. Typically, one mini team in the appraisal is assigned to review the objective evidence during the managing performance and measurement step. That mini-team will then be in the best position to commence completion of the performance report as they review the data. In the evidence, they should also verify that the measurements relate appropriately to business objectives and that data is accurate and consistent as it relates to evaluating the achievement of the business goals. Questions that may be asked include, are the measures relevant and appropriate? Are the objectives specific, measurable, achievable, relevant and time-bound? Are the analysis procedures and conclusions correct and reasonable? Does the organization verify data quality and consistently address all the applicable practices in the three practice areas as they relate to the measurement and analysis efforts? Interview sessions allow the data to be measured for consistency and the objective evidence to be tested. Interview sessions also provide the team an opportunity to test the priorities of the organization, to explore how measures were derived and how relevance to the objectives was assured. The performance report may not take priority in these discussions, but as the team meets with different groups, a picture of how performance is managed in the organization will emerge. The process group within the organization may discuss process improvement priorities. Senior management may review objectives and check progress. Interviews with the PMO or metrics group may cover metric definition, collection, and analysis. All together, these pieces of the puzzle will form a more complete picture of the organization's performance. As the team forms consensus around weaknesses, improvement opportunities, and other potential findings, the performance report should be updated and synchronized with those findings, as doing so will ensure the performance report is a deliberate part of discussions with the appraisal team. As findings are drafted, then validated, the appraisal team leader should be aware how each finding may reflect on the performance report. Many teams establish a time in the appraisal schedule to discuss the performance report. This is one of the most direct activities for checking and validating that the performance report is in line with the appraisal findings. Another recommendation is to review the preliminary and final findings of the performance report with the staff members who have roles that support the activities. Preliminary findings also provides the team a chance to validate the performance report. This usually does not mean the performance report itself will be presented, however, Questions or anomalies may have been revealed when the team reviewed or discussed the report. As with any other potential finding or need for additional information, activities that are part of the preliminary findings provide the team with a final opportunity to obtain any information necessary to resolve any inconsistencies with the performance report. Overall, 
Validating the performance report occurs during most of the activities that are part of the appraisal. It may be happening in the background, but it must not be overlooked and definitely should not be treated as an after-the-fact activity. The performance report reflects the appraisal findings, and the appraisal findings mirror the performance report. Together, they are powerful tools to ensure an appraisal result is an accurate reflection of how an organization is doing when it comes to building capabilities and reaching sustainable and consistent performance results for achieving its business goals. Thank you for joining me for the CMMI Tech Talk. You can view additional resources below. If you have any questions, please contact us by visiting support.isaka.org.